Paul and Silas were taken, they were beaten, they were put in prison, they were put in stocks. Timothy and Luke were looking on. That's sometimes where we are, looking on when our friends are being brave. Looking on when their risks are painful and unjust. Looking on when all these things happen. Throughout the world, people are persecuted for their faith much more than losing a job. Much more than losing a promotion. Much more than losing a friend. We're studying right now underground reality Vietnam, where people 12-year-old little girls are taken to jail and threatened with beatings and rape to give up where their church is meeting. Vietnam, we've learned, is a place where pastors are taken and thrown in a three-foot by three-foot cell where they are meant to suffer and be left alone. So much more in Africa, in Asia, than what we have to suffer here. But it's a faith worth dying for. And Paul and, Paul and Silas demonstrate how much they love God and how much that faith is worth to them when it says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. They were singing hymns to God. They were praying in a case where they had just been beaten where they had just been thrown in prison, where they were in stocks, where they were chained, where nothing was right, where all they were doing was minding their own business and their profession of faith and profession of strength in God lands them in jail, lands them persecuted. It's a big risk that they took. But they sit there, worshiping. See, Paul elsewhere when he writes, whether well-fed or hungry, well, whether beaten, whether whatever happens, I will praise God. And this is a demonstration of that. They were just severely flogged and praying and singing hymns. And it amazes all the other prisoners. So much so that there was a violent earthquake. The foundations of the prison were shaken, and at once all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came to its miracle number one. The jailer woke, woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here, miracle number two. Can you imagine all the doors and all the shackles coming off them? The prisoners, even in a county lockup, in a prison like up in Greene County, that not a single person would escape. That was a miracle. Paul's risk of just living his faith, of just being, got him to a place where he was in jail. But so much more, got him to a place where two miracles occurred. The doors were open and that nobody escaped. That everybody stayed in. And even more so, that the jailer asked this question, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And so, coming into Philippi, where there was less than ten Jewish men, Paul and Silas come in. First, if you look back in the passage, you see they convert Lydia to become part of the church. And then you have this slave girl who most probably became part of the church. And here you have this jailer. And not just the jailer, his whole house. His family, his servants, everybody who lived with him. After the great risk of just being for Paul, there was a greater reward of a church in Philip. And to this day, we benefit from that church as we look in the book of Philippians. And in the book of Philippians, where it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness or magnanimity be known to all, the Lord is near. 
a great joy you can live to know that our faith does take risks just every day, just being. Because our faith is not meant to be something that we hide under a bushel, as, the, as it says in the Gospels. Our light is to shine. We ought to just have an individual faith, but we must have an individual strong faith, founded in prayer and founded in the scriptures. 